Good afternoon, kindergarten families. Miss Hulsart here. I did just want to check in and um, give you some more updates, kind of a second round of updates of what's going on in our classroom and what your students have been working on. Um, some quick updates, a reminder about our uniform policy. We have gym Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And on those days, students can be in black shorts or sweatpants and a high veil gym t-shirt. Some of them are red, some of them are gray, um, but they can, in any high veil shirt, they can be wearing. Um, and on Tuesday and Wednesday, we do not have gym, so students are required to be in black pants or a skirt and the red high veil polo. Um, it is starting to get chilly. A lot of your kids are cold. So if you are able to send in a sweater of some sort, preferably one that is neutral, black, gray, red, um, preferably one that zips, not a hoodie, but if a hoodie is all you have, I will accept it. Um, but yeah, a sweater or something, even if it just goes back and forth in their backpack, especially in the mornings, they tend to be very cold. So that could be really helpful. Um, and just a heads up, we have picture day next week on the 28th. I know that that is a Thursday. I do believe they still have to be in the polo uniform and not the gym uniform, but I will send you an update about that once I know more. Now, literacy. We have been working on our five senses. We will finish that unit this week. The students have been doing a really good job thinking about which sense they use. Um, we had a little fun with it last week and we decided to do a little bit of a taste test. So we gave them two things that were sour, the lemon and the grapefruit, two things that were bitter, the arugula and the cranberries, something salty, the chips. Um, you can't see it on most of these. They got a starburst for something sweet. Um, and we had them taste test. As you can see, sour did not go over so well, but they had a lot of fun. One actually asked me today if we could do some more taste testing. And we ended with popsicles, so everyone was happy in the end. Um, our next unit will be stories. These are all of the stories that we will read for that unit. Important words and things to start practicing with your students. Talking about characters. Who is in the story, person or animal? Which one is the main character? talking about the setting of the story, where does it take place, and talking about the plot. Well, what happened in the story? How did it start? What was the problem? How did the story end? And then some of the relevant vocabulary, that vocabulary that we practice that has multiple meanings um, for this unit, peace, cross, play, stream, and peak. Now, in our skills block, we have been working on sounds. You're going to start seeing a lot of papers that look like this. The students are practicing listening for if the <coughs> excuse me, if the sound is at the beginning. So this was a letter A. A completed paper would look like this. These four uh, words start with the A ah sound. The X indicates that that, that picture does not start with that sound. We've also been continuing our blending. I have a whole list of new words that you can be practicing blending with your students at home. And our upcoming sounds, excuse me, oh, let me move me, are O says ah, C says k, G says g, and I says i. I and A are really hard. Have them think about like icky, like scrunch up your nose, i, i, i. Um, that's going to be a sound we use a lot. Now, in class, we have started working on chaining. Chaining is going to be the first step of our reading. So this is what our board looks like. I show you this because it's something you can practice at home. We put our vowels that we know on the top, sounds that we know on the bottom, and then we work with chaining. So I'll put the word dad, right? I'll use the two D cards and the A card. I'll put it on the line. We'll sound it out. We'll read the word and I'll say, hmm. If that says dad, and I change the first sound to t, what word do I have now? So here are two possible chains, um, but any of the letters that we know, you can use to practice chaining with your students. And then by the end of this unit, we will send home um, these two sheets with words that your students should be able to read and practice. They will know these sounds. They should be able to sound them out in a sequence and blend them to make the word. 
In writing, we've been working on making lists. You'll see a lot of different sheets about making lists. This is really important. It's big in the planning stage. When they get to a point that they're going to be writing stories, they need to plan, well, if I want to write about something that I'm really good at, what are three things I'm really good at? Make a list of those three things, and now you have topics to choose from to do your writing from. In math, we are, con oh, excuse me. We are continuing to work on the counting sequence. We are now going from zero to seven, and actually by the end of this week, we'll be working on zero to eight, filling in missing numbers. You're gonna see a lot of this work coming home with your students. They need practice with it going forwards and backwards. So any way that you wanna practice will be really helpful for them. We are also continuing to work on our whole equals part plus part. So these are both threes. We've done it up to four and to five. With a number sentence, can they draw the picture or rather color in the picture to show the difference? So this one is one plus two. This one is two plus one. So we color one first and then two, or we color two first and then one and then they practice writing the number sentence. We are doing it a lot in class. Um, it's going to be really crucial for them as we get further through the math program for them to be able to do this work. And the other day, we played uh, twin versus twin. We had it on morning work, and so the twins decided to challenge each other to see who could uh, answer the problem correctly. Now, the next thing we are working on are counting path. So, this is a way for students to plan their counting. So not only do they need to count and put the total, but I'm looking for them to draw a path. How did I count? I started here and I worked my way up and around. This is something you're gonna start seeing a lot of um, on their work, practicing these counting paths. Another thing you're gonna start seeing a lot of are the five frames. We are practicing being able to identify five by itself and count on. So this one is five and no more. I know that it's five. This one is five, six, seven, writing seven, practicing recognizing that five as a singular group and counting on. So those are all of my updates for you this week. If you have any questions or concerns, you are always welcome to email or call me or text me and we can answer any questions you may have. Thank you so much. Have a great week.